World Fisheries Production, Utilization and Demand Despite fluctuations in supply and demand caused by changing state of fishery resources, the economic climate and environmental conditions, fisheries and aquaculture remain very important as a source of food, employment and revenue in many countries and communities. Reported global capture fisheries and aquaculture production contracted from a figure of 122 million tons in 1997 to 117 million tons in 1998. There were, this was mainly owing to the effect of climate anomaly El Nino on some major marine capture fisheries. However, production recovered in 1999 for which the preliminary estimate is about 125 million tons. The production increase of 20 million tons over the last decade was mainly due to aquaculture, as capture fishery production remained relatively stable. Introduction The global patterns of fish production owe much to the activities of China, which reports production in weight that accounts for 32% of the world total. Other major producer countries are Japan, India, the US, the Russian Federation and Indonesia. When China is excluded, however, the production of fish used as a food for humans have remained relatively stable. But the production of fish destined for animal feed has decreased in the recent years. The decline registered in 1998 was largely due to the El Nino effect, particularly on the Encoveta fishery, which supplies a significant proportion of the fish used for fish meal and fish oil. However, the event had much less impact on the supply of fish for food which declined only slightly to 11.8 kg per capita. Outside China, the world's population has been increasing more quickly than the total fish production and the per capita fish supply has declined since the mid-1980s. In recent years, fish supplies have expanded rapidly and in 1994, they reached 109.6 million tons, mainly as a result of continued rapid growth in aquaculture production, especially in China, and in harvestable stocks of pelagic species off the west coast of South America. Consequently, both fish meal production and fish supplies for human consumptions have reached record levels. A brief review follows of where and how this production increase came about and of what it has meant for utilization and trade. Now let us discuss fishery production scenario at a global level. In the last two decades back, the total global fish production and shellfish fish from capture fisheries and aquaculture reached a record level of 109.6 million tons, just over 7 million tons, more than it had been in 1993 or a 7% increase. Most of the increase came from marine capture fisheries, which accounted for 4.9 million of the 7.3 million tons increase, with just under 0.5 million tons being produced from mariculture. Most of the remaining 1.9 million tons came from inland aquaculture production, mainly from Asia, while some 0.25 million tons were reported from higher inland capture fishery production, again mainly in Asia. Preliminary figures for 1995 indicate a new peak of total production at 112.3 million tons. Provisional production figures for mariculture and inland aquaculture show an estimated increase from 18.6 million tons to 21.0 million tons more than offsetting the decline in the harvest from marine and inland capture fisheries of about 0.6 million tons with respect to 1994, reaching a volume of about 91.0 million tons. Asia, especially China, contributed most of the increase in aquaculture production. These production figures show that recent pattern of production continues with regard to capture fisheries and aquaculture. The trend for demersal fisheries, however, is markedly different from that characterizing pelagic species. Global landings of pelagic fish, which with the exceptions of high-priced tunas and other large pelagics are relatively low-priced fish, have shown an underlying upward trend 
since 1915. This trend continues and is particularly apparent when five highly variable species Ancoveta, Atlantic herring, Japanese pilcard, South American pilcard and chub mackerel are excluded. In contrast, landings of demersal fish which obtained relatively high prices have remained constant since the 1970s. This situation which has occurred in spite of setting up of new fisheries for established species is particularly apparent when the relative variable landings of Alaska Pollock are excluded. The rapid growth in aquaculture production is the result of increased predominance of carp species. In 1994, carps accounted for almost half of the total volume of aquatic products produced through culture. As a consequence of relatively slow geographical spread of aquaculture and a relatively small increase in the number of species under culture, the predominance of long established producers and traditional species increased. Here we need to talk on the recent trends in trade of fish and fish products. In 1995, developed countries accounted for about 85% of total fish imports in value terms. Japan continued as the world's largest importer of fishery products with some 30% of the global total. The US, which is the world's second major exporter of fish and fishery products, was also its second biggest importer and the Europe further increased its dependence on imports for its fish supply. In 1995, fish imports by all three major importers increased. The major products involved in import-export were shrimp, tuna, cod, squid, canned sardines and mackerels, salmon and fish meal such as carps, milk fishes, some shrimp, cyprinids and anchovies. The high Ancoveta catches in the Southeast Pacific in 1994 resulted in record levels of fish mill production in Chile and Peru. Now we come to utilization. The increase in catches from marine fisheries in 1994 was mainly owing to greater catches of Ancoveta in the Southeast Pacific, a stock that is subject to massive fluctuations depending on El Nino conditions. These catches are generally reduced to fish mill and fish oil and form the largest single source of fish used for reduction. Consequently, the global use of fish for reduction to fish mill and fish oil in 1994 was estimated to have been a record almost 33 million tons. Of the preliminary figures of 112.3 million tons of total fishery production in 1995, it is calculated that some 31.5 million tons were used for reduction. Ancoveta catches in the Southeast Pacific were somewhat lower than they had been in 1994 and catches of small pelagic species for reduction in the other main fish mill exporting countries were on aggregate also slightly lower than those of the previous year. Fish available for direct human consumption in 1995 was estimated to be 80 million tons, 3.4 million tons more than in 1994, representing a greater increase than the estimated population growth rate in the same year. The average annual per capita availability of food fish increased to 14 kg. As in the previous year, most of the production increase occurred in Asia, particularly China. Here we need to talk about fish as a food. In most developing countries, fish will continue to be an important source of protein, but there will still be the potential for exports of fish and strong macroeconomic ar arguments for permitting and even encouraging such exports. Thus, countries will find that they need to promote schemes that make substitute foods, preferably other fish available in local markets to replace what is being exported. In Africa, there are large stocks of small pelagic species of both the northwest and southwest coasts. These species can be harvested at a low cost and constitute 
an adequate replacement in local African diets for the exported high value products. It seems plausible that countries along with the Gulf of Guinea will want to develop joint strategies with countries in Northwest and Southwest Africa to exploit these stocks as a source of cheap and nutritious fish for local consumers. Existing regional fishery management organizations would provide an institutional mechanism for coordinating national policies in this respect. In some regions of Asia, cultured fish has the potential to replace exported high-value products in local markets. This is because fish farmers, with some exceptions such as those who culture shrimps and mollusks, already sell their produce in local markets. As a group, fish farmers have the ability to respond to increase in demand. In South America, except for in countries facing the Caribbean, fish consumption is generally low. The fish dependent populations are coastal communities for whom fish supplies will not be a major problem. As a result of these trends in consumption, international trade will grow possibly more rapidly in value than in volume. Trade will expand in two ways. First, in developing countries, fish processing for developed markets will become a very attractive employment generating opportunity for governments that need to find alternative employment opportunities, particularly for displaced artisanal fisheries and their families. In this context, the ready-to-eat segment of the industry is particularly attractive as it is labor intensive. However, most of the countries that depend on fish imports to satisfy demands also have fish processing industries and it is clear that these national industries will do their best to survive even if it means opposing the abolition of existing trade barriers. The second reason for an expansion in trade is that developing countries will become increasingly important markets for fish during the coming decades. As this happens, they will export more to neighboring developing countries and other developing markets. For example, in South America, Brazil is likely to continue to be a major fish importer and its import will come predominantly from other South American producers. Over the coming decades, in most OECD, that is Organization for Economic Cooperation and Development countries, the total volume of fish consumed will not change much and the modifications that do take place are likely to be determined more by fluctuations in population size than by growing disposable real incomes. This does not mean that the value of per capita consumption will not increase. It most probably will as consumers increase the share of expensive fish products by buying more ready to eat products and substituting expensive for cheap fish products. Consumption predictions for the 80% of the world's population who are still likely to increase quantity of fish they consume are complicated. Although exploiting the effect of population growth on the basis of UN projections and recorded apparent per capita consumption is straightforward, it is more difficult to make a reasonable prediction of how demand is influenced by raising income and the relative changes in real prices of substitutes. For short-term predictions over a year or two, recourse is usually more to calculating and applying elasticities of demand relative to growth in income and assuming prices to be stable. For a category that includes as wide a range of different products as fish does and for periods that are as long as 30 years, determination of the appropriate elasticity to use is a complicated issue. FAO is studying the development of long-term predictions in a two-pronged approach. In the first of these, during which organization worked in association with two CGIAR centers, that is Consortium of International Agricultural Research Centers, a computer-based modeling approach was developed. The second approach consists of a series of in-depth investigations of probable future fish consumptions in major consuming countries. 
Now let us talk about the world fishery demand. At the end of 1990s, humans' need for food and income was still the dominant determinant of the nature and magnitude of fish consumption and production. The desire to reserve access to fish for pleasure, including non-consumptive uses, was growing and in many instances was respected, although such uses were still limited to a small number of countries and from global perspective had only a minor impact on those who fished or cultured fish to earn a living. In recent decades, however, the conditions determining the traditional use of fish have been slowly changing. One factor that has made an impact is the increasing size of the market in terms of both the number of people and the geographical area covered. On the one hand, most consumers have had access to an expanding variety of food and fish products and a growing number of sellers. On the other, most primary producers have been able to choose from among a larger number of buyers. Thus, there has been an expanding range of possibilities both to satisfy food need and to generate income. The resulting increase in the number of trading possibilities has had and will continue to have repercussions on the fisheries and aquaculture sectors. Here we find it necessary to take a look at overfishing and fishing capacity. Overfishing is not a recent issue. It was formally recognized internationally in the early 1900s and was the subject of the London Conference on Overfishing in 1947. Subsequently, it has become prevalent in most fishing areas and affects capture fisheries in developing and developed countries, often becoming particularly severe in densely populated coastal areas and in very productive offshore areas. Unless effective action is taken, overfishing will get worse. In many developing countries, population pleasure and the shortage of alternative employment opportunities together with the lack of effective conservation and management policies will increase the attraction of fisheries as a last resort to employment. While the problems and their severity differ from one situation to another, important factors contributing to excessive fishing effort include a reluctance by many governments to restrict access and to take the necessary conservation and management decisions. Frequently, giving priority to economic and social objectives with short to medium term benefit in preference to other complementary biological and social objectives with long term sustainable economic benefits. A lack of financial and technical resources to formulate and implement the necessary management actions in many developing countries. Slow growth in employment and production in many developing countries which effectively limits fishermen's possibility to leave fisheries for other occupations. Management authority that is not being devolved to the lowest practical level. Insufficient control of fishing fleets by both flag states and port states leading to considerable unauthorized fishing. A lack of commitment to international cooperation towards joint management often coupled with a limited effective authority of regional fishery bodies. Now what are the actions taken at international level? The problem of excess fishing capacity and the need to control fishing effort were addressed in various countries to take steps to reduce overcapacity and prevent any net increase in the overfished or depleted stocks. These international initiatives have also reiterated the need to strengthen regional and sub-regional bodies and arrangements to facilitate conservation and management. For high sea fisheries, the conclusion of the UN agreement should serve to enhance the conservation and management of the two types of stocks it embraces if states implement it as intended. However, its effectiveness will depend on the level of international cooperation developed, on the capacity and willingness of flag states 
to exercise control over their flag vessels and on the extent to which sub-regional and regional organizations and arrangements are adopted or established to carry out the required conservation and management functions. Ultimately, the success of the agreement will depend on the willingness of flag states to contribute equitably to the required reduction in excessive fishing effort which characterizes mainly high sea fisheries. Sub-regional and regional fishery organizations and arrangements are required to facilitate the conservation and management of shared fishery resources. The UN Convention on the Law of the Sea provides for cooperation in fisheries management through competent sub-regional, regional or global organizations. The production of fisheries continues with regard to capture fisheries and aquaculture. There is a different trend observed for demersal and pelagic fisheries. Global landings of pelagic fish show an underlying upward trend since 1950. Fish available for direct human consumption in, is increasing every year representing a greater increase than the estimated population growth rate in the same year. The average annual per capute availability of food fish increases to 14 kg. Most of the production increase occurs in Asia, particularly China. One factor that has made an impact is the increasing size of the market in terms of both the number of people and the geographical area covered. On one hand, most consumers have the access to an expanding variety of food and fish products and a growing number of sellers. On the other, most primary producers are able to choose from among a large number of buyers. Thus, there is an expanding range of possibilities both to satisfy food needs and to generate income. The resulting increase in the number of trading possibilities has had and will continue to have repercussions on the fisheries and aquaculture sector. <music>